Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now, here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, joined by my lovely and talented wife, Miss Southern Shell, Tyler on the board. Y'all done brought some lunch today? <laughs> What's going on? Uh, we're doing a taste test. Taste test. Is, is this the blue plate uh, stuff that they sent the new brand new product, Tyler? Brand yeah, so product. not only did they get a like new branding on all of their products rolling out, they also have a brand new mayonnaise called the Hot and Spicy Mayo. Supposedly it's like a Cajun Creole, uh, kind of like Creole mustard, but like their take on that with mayonnaise. So where's the spoons? <laughs> I see y'all brought some you, chicken strips. When we talked about doing this, you said, I am not eating mayonnaise. Y'all are going to have to do something else. I'll try. <laughs> I, I mean, spoon. I like it. This is different, though, because it's not just like open up the jar and get you out a big old plug of it or whatever. Oh, so how you. It's flavored. Oh, it's flavored. It's, it's more not of a the sauce. squeezy. Yeah. It's not the. I'm interesting. I hadn't, I hadn't opened it yet. I'm interested to see if it's like. A sauce, or is it thick like mayo, or what's the consistency yeah. of it? It looks kind of like an Abner sauce or something like that to me, like a yeah, Zach chicken, sauce yeah, or yeah, a chicken dipping slim sauce. Slim chickens. I know they said the best applications for it are like po' boys, cro- fried crawfish, fried oysters, like that oh, kind yeah. of thing. So yeah, my kind of food. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's another rainy day here in Hernando. Yeah, I did. I mean, we filmed some videos yesterday, but we did them indoor because of raining all day. Yeah. And we don't have our uh, filming kitchen built just yet. It's in the works. They we put have bricks uh, on today or this. Oh, really? This, well, we have electrical. The bricks were delivered before the rain started. <laughs> I don't know if they worked yesterday or today. We got the electrical in. So, do you want to dive right in and try the mayonnaise? I don't want my chicken so you get cold, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Tyler, you got you some chicken down there. I do. I do. So, tell us about read the light. What did you read to this? It's it just says a New Orleans family tradition since 1937. 27. 27. 27. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why don't we let it says Tyler it right there. Read. Quality since 1927. Why don't we let Tyler read it? He's got them good young guys. That's all you need. It just says hot and spicy mayo, right? Yeah. Yep. Hot and spicy Open mayo. it up. All Make right. sure it's, did y'all take the little safety thing off? Yes, we I did. did. All yolk recipe, original, rich and creamy. How's it come? It does come out thick, doesn't it? Yeah. It doesn't come. Well, I mean. I like it's like an old school label. It's got the steamship on I there. Do like it's the got label. like a I don't know what kind of bird, pelican or something on there. Is that the state bird of is that the, is it spicy? <laughs> is that the state bird of uh Louisiana? I don't know. Oh, I squeezed it a good bit. Tyler, you want some? Yeah. I'm just gonna leave the camera on you for yep. a second. So okay. we want your raw reaction. You want to try that? Oh, you want to see me try it with the mayonnaise first? Yeah, yeah the brown. Hey, I'm not scared. See, it looks like it's got something else in it. It's not just like mayonnaise. Like you get a straight mayo. I mean, it's not it's not just straight taking mayo. This has been like taunting me in my office for like Why well, you months. been wanting to try it? <laughs> yeah. it smells good. It is spicy. It is. It's good. It's good. That's a. It's straight reminds me of like a dipping sauce, like you would get for crab claws, fried shrimp, yes. something yeah. like that that they would serve. It's not a remoulade because it doesn't have like the pickles, that pickle yeah. caper, all Sweet that stuff flavors. in it. But as far as like a seafood dipping sauce, oh, I, I know what I'm doing with this. Mm. I'm turning it into my, you know that shrimp sauce I make when I do crawfish and stuff and yeah. dip it in it? That's going in it. It's It's got a kick. It's got a cayenne kick. Like, it's a, it's not black pepper. It's got to be white pepper and, like, red pepper, cayenne or something like that because it's got some heat to it. It is spicy. I'll, hey, that's better than straight mayonnaise. <laughs> I wouldn't dip a chicken tender in just straight mayo. You wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> I have. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. What about French fries? Would you drink, dip uh, French fries in straight mm-hmm. mayo? No. Oh, yeah. That's fries and this this kind of, you know, you know, we went to Utah and they had those fry sauces. Yeah. That could easily be like if you had just a little bit of ketchup. They um they weren't this spicy, though. Like, I don't think this isn't like, it doesn't have like a chipotle spice. How hot, how hot do you think it is, Tyler? Have you tried it? Yeah. Tried it's it? uh, if it seems like one of those things, the more you try it, yeah. the more you put in your mouth, it's like the spicier it kind of gets. Mm-hmm. But I will say, like, I have tried a billion, like, store bought, like, K 
Cajun mayos or spicy mayos or whatever, and like they all have like this taste to them. This does not. I'm getting. I can get down with this. That's good. You that weird appetite, really like good. a plasticky, like yeah, it's I agree. not very good. They've You'll... got a winner with the consistency, the flavor, the heat. A lot of people would say this is too hot. Yeah, I would say so. It's definitely like Cajun Creole type yeah. mayo. Talk about deviled eggs with this. Shoot. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> that is a good idea. Mm-hmm. I could definitely see it like on a pie boy. Thinking like a spicy macaroni salad, like a Cajun Ooh. With a king craw in it, like a pasta salad with yeah. this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I get down with it. something in the jar. Just squeeze. Yeah. I think it's just a squeeze bottle, if I'm not mistaken. You're going to need the gallon. <laughs> need the industrial size. Now Man, it's got some heat to it. I'm not going to lie. I know it's for, I need a, it wasn't that spicy. No, it's got. It's, I, it's coming on. It's coming on. <laughs> it, that's a build up. Excuse me. I know it's rolling out to stores pretty much like wherever you can get blue plate uh, within the next month or so. So y'all should start seeing a hit. Yeah, y'all try that one. Try it. That's a winner. I don't, I don't get the weird aftertaste no. or the weird because that's a problem with a lot of those sauces. It's got that they bottle. Yeah, the only one that I've found so far is Sir Kensington, and Sir Kensington is like ridiculously expensive. Yeah, it's like twelve, yeah. fourteen dollars. Was that some kind of European? It's got the <laughs> little mustache on the front, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, super expensive bougie mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah, it's like usually in the fancy cheese section. Oh, <laughs> I never had that one. <laughs> I'm not a mayo connoisseur. <laughs> I'll stick with blue plate. <laughs> But so that's a winner. I I give it two thumbs up. Heck yeah! To come straight out the squeeze bottle, to not have to do anything to have flavor like that. You squeeze a little bit of lemon in there. Ooh, it's still- add a little. I mean, add a little bit of chopped pickle or something like that. Capers. You've got a heck of a remoulade. Easy. Because it has. I don't know if it has a Worcestershire in it already. I don't I get couldn't. a Worcestershire. Do you want to look at the ingredients? No, no, I'm good. But it's got the consistency of mayo because it's thick. You know, most time um, you, you get a sauce like that and it's got a little runnier consistency. Yeah. That's the best spicy mayo I've ever had. Really, really good. I don't know that I've had spicy mayo. <laughs> but that's a winner. Well, coming from a connoisseur, it is really, really good. I've tried a lot of them. And- <laughs> <laughs> for a mayonnaise, like a for a self-proclaimed mayonnaise connoisseur. Exactly. Refined taste buds. That's what I said in the community the other day. <laughs> somebody somebody went back and found Dukes in an old recipe that y'all posted, and they said, Oh, yeah. Uh, pre, you know, pre blue, before Malcolm tried blue yeah. plate. And I was like, he's since refined oh, I've always his taste buds. Blue plate. It wasn't before. It was just. <laughs> somebody said before Shell turned it. Yeah. Before <laughs> Shell mandated the. <laughs> There was a time that all we could afford was like Aldi mayo. <laughs> it was whatever store brand was. <laughs> so we've been busy this past week. Sh- we were shooting videos. Like Shot a rip video. Then. Yeah. Shot some videos for TikTok coming up. Does did, it ever did get? Did a couple. Did I do two drinks or I kind of did. One of them was just a test, like a beverage test. See if it would work. Infusing some vodka. And then the other one was. Blackout Rage Gallon. <laughs> We're going to talk about that <laughs> next, week, next week after they drop. Yeah, I did want to ask you, does it, you know, with all the recipes we put out, does it ever get hard to come up with ideas? Um, I keep a pretty good list going with, like, stuff to do. And so I also kind of watch and see what other people are doing to get inspiration from and how different ways I would do something, you know, if I see something interesting. So not really. I can always come up with something. Whether it's good or not. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't. How many times can you do a brisket or how many times can you do ribs? I mean, I've done a bunch of ribs, though. And that's what I mean. I did a different rib that I'd never done this past week. So, and it was good. Yeah. Really good. We'll talk about that in just a I'm chewing on my. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but like, I feel delicious like. Delicious texture and taste of blue plate. <laughs> You guys have such a backlog of content, too, that's, like, kind of not really old, old, but it's, like, older now oh. that it's kind of fun to revisit some of those older recipes, I, too. So. I, I really need to do that. There's a lot of those old ones that I know I could do better and that were still great recipes that I think people yeah. would still enjoy, you know, because, I mean, we got all that stuff archived, but I didn't do a lot of those straight recipes back then because yeah. it was more blog style, and I was just kind of writing, telling what I was doing, and, and then we added, like, the whole full blown recipe, just quick to get to it, and then I think people like that more anyway. Oh yeah, I'm not a writer, so <laughs> who wants to well, read my try- babble? If you're trying to 
you know, recreate something, you want a recipe. I do. Yeah, I want to look. That's, I mean, I might not follow it exactly, but I want to look at it. When I look up stuff now, and it's like a blog style post, I always immediately scroll through it and get to the bottom where the recipe should be. Usually. And if it's not there, I get like, well, I'm not going back to this one. Yeah. I can't trust that site. I usually, there's usually a jump to recipe link at the very top, you know? Yeah, I'll hit that. Yeah. And then sometimes there's not, and you're just like, Oh yeah, I mean it's just ad, ad after ad after I ad. That. That's like, was that just an old school thing to do? Yeah. We never really did the ads like that. Because I hated it. I thought it was a cheap way to do it. Yeah, I mean I guess, you're coming for the content. That's what you want. So yeah. that's what I wanted to give people. And if it takes me thirty minutes to find it on that page of ever scrolling, I'm yeah. not. I'm going somewhere else. Me too. Yeah. Um, this past weekend, uh, we did a company outing. We went bowling. Took the whole team. We did. <laughs> um, I think Cheyenne was the best bowler. Crazy. I think Mikey had the form down. I mean, he was doing the slide and the spin and everything, <laughs> making the ball. He was like cut. He was pitching, cut the ball. right like to the gut. He go. was throwing it so <laughs> yeah, it's like he's throwing softball or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, Malcolm, eh, I a little was, rusty. You got better. You yeah, got. Yeah, I progressively got better game after game. I got a little worried. There a lot of, there a lot of. If you needed like the ten pin or the one pin or whatever <laughs> it was over on the other side, I could get those. <laughs> See, I was the opposite. Huh. I could, I could hit the middle, and then as soon as I had one pin left, there's no way like you ever gonna hit it. Immediately gutter ball. I'm no bowler. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, I would totally join a league if I had time. <laughs> It's fun. Yeah. I was surprised by how many people were bowling midday. Like, it was packed. <laughs> I was like, what do these people do for a living? You know, we, we took a company outing to go. Yeah. But, like, they're just up there hanging out at the bowling alley. I mean, they, there was a dude beside us that was straight pro. Oh, yeah. Even his, like, when he put, you know, he type your name in, he put PBA <laughs> in his, his name. That might have been his initials. I don't know. Might have been. Or the pro but he, bowlers. Yeah, but he bowled yeah. like a 286 one time. I was like, holy. I said, man, have you ever done a 300? And he said, that's as close as I got. But he was like strike after strike. I got like six strikes, something like that. That's pretty good. Like I, got, I think I got four or five. Yeah. Not in okay. one game. <laughs> I'm all about, Spread out over three games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about uh, sports where you drink beer and eat hot dogs. That's <laughs> right up my alley. We even shot a little pool after it. Yeah, we did. I had a day of it. Who won the pool tournament? We did. That's me, and Shell. me and Shell were on teams against Mikey and Dustin. Nice. And uh, Yeah, but we lost technicality. Mikey knocked uh, eight ball If you ball knock eight ball in, the other team wins. That's, I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's how it works. You got to play good defense and pool. It's not all just making the balls go in. You got to set them up for failure. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were doing? That's my strategy. <laughs> if I can't, if I if I don't have a, a good shot, I'm, I just yeah. try to play defense. Sunday, you cooked catfish. Fried some catfish because it was was it no, it wasn't rain. I cooked it outside that day. Yeah. Yep. We come back from the farm. Decided we were going to do do a little catfish dinner Sunday night. Something about springtime makes you want to do some fish. How'd you rate it? Uh, 10 out of 10. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. The fries Catfish, hush puppies, fries, pickled Slaw red onion, good. slaw. I will say this. We bought the Duke's coleslaw. You did what? <laughs> <laughs> they It's something new they're putting out. It's like a coleslaw dressing, Duke's. It's pretty good. That's good. I ain't going to lie. Is that in like the refrigerated section? No, or? no. It's over there by the mayonnaise. Oh, wow. And sauces and spreads. I have to try it out. The Duke's? The enemy. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, but I they might well cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, they don't have if their Blue own. Blue Plate had a coleslaw you would buy dressing. It? I'd be all about it. And it'd be fire. Yeah, and it would be fire. I could see them coming out one. better than Duke. Yeah, we'll do all the product testing for y'all. Yeah, Same now way. that I got this spicy mayonnaise, I bet that would make a good coleslaw. I had it be, needs a little. So you could add a little chipotle to that and make a really good like slaw for ta- fish tacos. Ooh. Yeah, that would be really good. Heck yeah, have that pop. Um, speaking of blue plate, uh, last week we thought that blue plate sent us to yeah. shine in a t shirt. It was Mitchell. <laughs> My man Mitchell come through once again. You know he sent us a gallon of blue plate. Yeah. He had found a gallon. 
He sent that to us, and then he sent that, but it didn't say from Mitchell Bedwell. Uh-uh. It just, it, I don't know where it had it. I just, looked at the return, and I was like, it's like P&S delivery or something. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It was like an ironic week that I had also had a meeting with Blue Plate, and they said, oh, we're going to send you guys these signs we have. So when it came in, I was like, dang, that was like two days of turnaround time, but heck yeah. They got it to us fast. So thanks, Mitchell. Shout out okay. to Mitchell. <laughs> we got it hanging up. I wore my shirt yesterday. He's the most connected man in barbecue. <laughs> Mitchell knows everybody. <laughs> and he knows everything going on, too. Yeah, heck yeah. If you need to know. Behind the scenes. But this week, you had a sausage seasoned ribs recipe. So, I was I was really rib hungry. I hadn't cooked any in a while. So, I picked up some whole spare ribs from Kroger. Save a little money. Save that money. Like what Dickie says. <laughs> and trim them down to St. Louis Cut myself. But I was going to, so you know, we do the sausage season on pork butts. So where did that I've come from? I've done a from? recipe. It actually came from Martin Jamie from Swine Life. When they learn to cook like pork butts for fundraisers or church or anything like that, the guy that showed them how to do it used a, a country sausage seasoning mixed with brown sugar, like regular brown sugar. Uh, and that was all he did? That was all he put on them. He put it on the outside of them. Cook them until they were, I don't know, pretty much done, like 180, and then wrap them, and then finish them off until they were could stick a probe, just plumb through it, and then stuck them in a cooler and held them for several hours, and then they'd you know, either serve them or deliver them or whatever, they sell them, whatever they're doing. That's how they cook pork butts. So That's when I met them. a decent way. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty standard, except for that sausage seasoning. When I first met them, they was like, yeah, we use sausage seasoning on everything. Sausage seasoning. I was like, what are y'all talking about? Sausage seasoning. I remember you being like, those guys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I mean, you're sausage putting sausage seasoning, seasoning on pork. I said, how can it be good? Because it's going to taste like, breakfast I mean, we, I've made, been breaking, my mom's been making breakfast sausage. That's where my recipe come from for the seasonings that I have. But it's made to make country breakfast sausage. They can kind of fry and serve with biscuits and gravy and all that. Never thought about putting it on meat as a rub. And um, so... I gave in, tried their way, absolutely delicious. <laughs> it's yeah. different. It puts a dark bark. It's a you know, it's a pretty good bark on it, but it puts a darker bark on it. You don't get and it doesn't look like competition barbecue. You know, yeah. it doesn't have that mahogany look to it. It's gonna be dark. And it gets a lot of it absorbs a lot of the smoke, so you get really good smoke flavor. But it what it, what it does for me the most is it brings out that pork flavor. You taste the meat. You can taste the smoke. It gives it a nice savory. And you get all that savoriness because when you think about sausage season, it's mainly salt and peppers, a little bit of sugar in it to balance it, and then they put sage and other spices and crushed red pepper and things like that. So it has a real savory, savory tone without being – it's not a sweet tone at all. It's just enough sugar to balance it. And so the reason why we don't use straight sausage seasons is because it would be way too hot. Because the stuff's pretty potent. I mean, it's made, you know, like one pound of that seasoning will season 25 pounds of meat sausage. And so that's, if you think of that sausage flavor, that's pretty strong, you know. So we just use it and cut it with, I like cutting it with turbinado instead of dark brown or regular brown sugar because that tends to burn. And I think I can control the darkness if I use the turbinado with the sausage seasoning. And you still get, it's not a sweetness, but it still plays with that savoriness. It offsets the salt song. So, do you have to use any more salt or any other savory element? No, on you don't it? have to use anything else. Just the sausage. But I did get to thinking. So I cooked these ribs, you know, and I cut them. I, I took the spare ribs to save some money. No joke. Cut them down. Put the rib tips to the side. We'll talk about rib tips in a minute. But it's so easy to buy the whole spare ribs, and they're always cheaper than a St. Louis cut or the baby back loin back rib. Because it's the whole slab. And I guess people typically don't cook the whole slab, don't know what to do with it. But it is the easiest. And I did a video. Man, that video blowed up on TikTok. But all you do is. I hadn't seen how it did on the other platforms. but Oh, uh, yeah. The, have you watched it? I'd have it? to double check on that. I know we're almost, we're yeah. rounding 4 million on TikTok. That's, That's crazy. Like, just to trim and just to tr- how to trim a set of spare ribs. But all you do is you flip them over bone up. And you kind of lay them to where the. The rib bones are kind of facing you. The rib tips are at the top. Go down that rack and go to the third or fourth bone. And you can feel it with your finger. It's, it's, it's longer than the others, and that's kind of where you want to make that line. 
to where you make a straight cut down the length of the ribs, separating that rib tip from the rack of ribs. And the rib tip's great. It's got cartilage in it, and it's you know fattiness, but there's a lot of good meat there. Don't throw that away. Oh, no, I love it. But once you get it separated, you kind of got this. I say it looks like the state of Tennessee. That's just the way a set of spare ribs <laughs> yeah, looks. Yeah, it kind of like does. Cut. Kind of has that long, straight edge that you just made, and then it kind of tapers up. Well, I'll even them up. I'll cut off some of that tip where they're thinner because it's not going to cook even. I might take one bone off the thick end just to square them up. Then you got a perfect rack of St. Louis ribs, usually 10, 11 bones. It's about the right size. And then you pull the membrane off or cut the flat the flat meat off and then pull the membrane. And if there's any excess fat on the meat side, just trim that down a little and you're ready to go. What is excess fat? When is it excess fat? Because you when like to leave a little fat, right? Yeah, but when it's like over a quarter inch thick, like a big fat deposit, all that's not going to render and you're just going to have a fatty pocket in your rib. Now, if you're just eating these at home, serve, I mean, that's fine, but like if you're doing them for competition or you want them to be perfect, I would take some of that fat out. Now, you don't want to create big divots in the slab of ribs. I try to just take it down even, slowly, and get rid of some of that fat. And if it's a little of it, that's fine. That's going to render, but you just don't want thick deposits. Just kind of shear it yeah, off the top. Yeah, and that's what I do. Even. Just use like a fillet knife, keep it kind of flat with the rib, the slab, and just slowly kind of grade it down to where you're taking some of that fat off and control cuts where you're just not gouging at it so, and then a lot of times i'll take the tip of the knife and come back and kind of score whatever fat's left make a little crosshatch pattern in it that'll help it break loose that'll help it render a little more as you cook it and you won't notice it as much like scoring the fat cap on a pork butt yeah i'm not a fan of scoring fat caps on pork butts why's that because it's harder to get that meat underneath if you don't score it, you can just slide oh. that fat cap right off. And you've got, to me, that's the best meat on the pork butt. Yeah. Is right underneath that fat cap. So, so if in you com- score it, in competition it cooking, you're exactly square. right. Yeah. But when I'm eating at home, I you love want the little squares. Because I pull out them little plugs and eat them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little rendered piece of fat that kind of gets crunchy. And then you get you a plug of that belly meat underneath it or whatever, you know, that's what we call it. It all comes out as one bite. It's almost like you're pulling out a burning plug or something yeah. out of the pork butt. So <laughs> I like true. it. So do, does the, do the ribs become the St. Louis cut after the trim? Or are they St. Louis like it's the whole spares? So or? they're they're the same. I guess I don't know how, I don't know how ribs got the St. Louis cut, yeah. nom, nom, the name, yeah. however you'd say that. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but um, they don't. They're not St. Louis cut unless they're separated away from the rib tip. Okay. And so basically, it's just a trimmed, trimmed rack of spare ribs. So you think? got you got some history for us. I do. So they call it the St. Louis style due to the fact that many of the packing houses of the country were concentrated in that area. Oh, and I so guess that's how they were Boston, cut and sell them. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I've never seen them like sell the tips at grocery stores. Really? I don't know in packing houses what they do with them. Like, you know, restaurants that sell rib tips, I'm betting they probably make their own rib tips. Yeah, they trim it themselves. They buy the spare ribs, they cook the slabs, and then they cook the rib tips. That's what we did at the restaurant I worked at. So You made your own? Did y'all serve rib tips there? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We just cut it beforehand and then pressed it afterwards and cooked our own. How would you serve the rib tips? Just smoked and sauced? or Uh, Smoked and just seasoned. It was a... I think Tex-Mex seasoning or something like that on it. And then okay. they had like a spicy Chipotle ranch with it. Okay. On the sides, you got to dip it. it They're pretty good. Were they yeah. smoked or were they like fried or something? Uh, they were smoked on the old hickory for okay. a few hours. Yeah. About the same as the ribs, I think. So, don't don't sleep on rib tips, man. They're fine eating. I love eating them. What do you typically do with your rib tips? So when I, so when I make my rib tips, separate them off the whole rack of spare ribs. And usually I'll cook them whole. I don't cut them until they're cooked. Now, you could chop them into pieces raw, treat them like individual pieces of ribs. But to me, it's better to cook them like a rack. And so with that rib tip, it's got a lot of cartilage that runs through it. It's got some sinew in there. You're not going to get it all off. It's going to have fat pockets. There's some weird, like, you know, real lean meat that's part of the loin or whatever that's been, you know. So it's an odd-shaped piece of meat. But I'll typically, you know, buy, put a binder on if you want to. You don't have to. I spritz these with cider vinegar and apple juice and then seasoned them and then start them out on the smoker just like the ribs. 
once they get color on them, wrap them dudes up. Now you could, you know, you could add anything to the wrap. I just wrapped them in butcher paper with a little bit more spritz of the apple cider vinegar and apple juice and cook them to their tender. And then when you take them off, they're easier to cut up because you can just take a, a chef's knife and cut them in like three finger size chunks and you've got a little piece of rib and it's, I mean, it's fantastic. I love the rib tips. I do too. They got like I don't little... mind gnawing around all that goodness. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's going to be some stuff left over, but when you're eating ribs, there's bones and the little knuckle left over on it too. So. Yeah. But these, there's a lot more like you call them flutter bones. Yeah. Flutter bones, tips. pieces of cartilage, you know. But I think that's why the meat's so good inside there. Oh, I because think it is, it is too. Thick. It's got all, it's got all that deliciousness down in it. Yeah. So I have a right question there. from the uh, TikTok comments about the whole spare rib. Like, what happens if you don't cut it and separate it before, and you just cook the whole thing at the same time? So some people do that. I, you, I've you seen have a recipe on that. Yeah, just cooking a whole set of spare ribs. Mm-hmm. There's some restaurants like even in Texas, I think they do that a lot of times. They don't trim them. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. That's not as a you know pretty a rib to me. Most time you think of a rack of ribs, it's a St. Louis cut or a slab of baby backs. Mm-hmm. It's not the whole side of ribs. Yeah. I see. But the old way to do it was always cook that whole side. But you might, more than likely, when you go to a restaurant serving that, you're not buying a rack of ribs. You're just getting a bone or two. Yeah. yeah. Because they're going to slice it off, and it's going to have all that rib tip still attached. And with that, I mean, it's a wide bone. You know, you're talking 12 inches probably, you know, 10, 12 inches. So it's the full rib. That is kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Because you yeah. get a, a little bit of the regular St. Louis cut. They're not as pretty, the, but yeah, they they aren't. But then you get good. the rib tippy, fatty. Yeah, uh, you know, a lot bone. of uh, another thing they like to do with those rib tips is turn them into tasso for seasoning, like red beans and rice, gumbos, things like that. How do they get it off the bone? You just take Cook a knife and, and cut it. Cut it the same. You know, you cut them into chunks first. Season them with Cajun season and smoke them till they're done. You're not worried about trying to get them mouth eaten tender. You know, yeah. you're just trying to get them 180, 190 is fine with those. But you're trying to get some smoke in it, preserve that meat. Then you can vacuum seal it, freeze it, take it out. When you get ready to cut it up, you just chop it up. You're going to separate Pull any it. cartilage or fat or anything like that. But then you're going to chop that lean meat up and it's just a flavoring for so any kind of dish that you want to yeah. add some smoke flavor to. It's really good. I wrote, uh, I like the rib tips because you get to gnaw around the bone. I think the meat, you gnaw around yeah, the Yeah, it's better. How do you spell gnaw? <laughs> G-N-A-W. Is that G-N-A-W. Okay. I put K-N-A-W. It's gnaw. Gnaw. <laughs> <laughs> so you cooked these on a stick, bu- your stick burner. I did. I cooked them on my outlaw uh, with hickory wood. Started me a bed of coals. Um, when, I got, when I got that cooked down, got the pit kind of warmed up. I just started adding splits, hickory wood, running about 275. Um, when the ribs went on, I usually go two and a half hours and I sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like two and a half hours in the smoke, adding what is needed, spritzing is needed. I didn't, in the video, I thought I had one of my big orange sprayers at the house. I don't know what happened to it. It disappeared. Michael may have done something with it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I always blame the kid, right? <laughs> But he was, he was at school, so I couldn't ask him. But I couldn't find it, so I was like, well, I'm still going to spritz these ribs. I'll just make a squeeze bottle. So I just took a water bottle and punched a whole hole in it, and it worked great. It worked really good. Yeah. That was like my favorite part of the video. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Super intuitive. Improvising. Yeah. But, I mean, I spritzed some. What do you think I spritzed some? After 45 minutes and then probably every 30 minutes after that. Yeah. Just making sure they stay... Um, you know, a little moist on top. I don't want to, because that's what's going to draw in some of that smoke flavor and help you build your bark. And then once those ribs. What, the moisture? Yeah, keeping them moist on top like that. How so? It just keeps them from drying what out, getting too, yeah, getting too dark. It just helps it absorb it, keeping, you know, keeping it a little damp on top. So by that theory, the dry meat is going to absorb less smoke. I mean. Than a, than a meat that has a moisture on it. It's just going to burn up and be tougher and drier. Okay. If you don't keep it moist like that and let that smoke do its job and you're still trying to build that even bark across it too so and once so once the bark gets built it kind of does it you know you've got you've got it as dark as you want it across the top that's when it's time to wrap you've got all the smoke you can get at that point you know it's those ribs were what were they what 165 because i actually probed them yeah you did you put and normally i don't it. probe ribs 
But I wanted to watch them and see what it did. So, man, I, I had the little short Thermoworks probe right in between a couple of the long bones. Just make sure you stay in meat and just wrap it up in your butcher paper, too. And that way you can watch them. There's no guessing. So when those dudes hit 204, I knew they were done. I just pulled them off. It took, what, another hour and 15 minutes, I think, something yeah, like that. Something like I always that. say about an hour, 15, hour and a half. But you also kind of checked, you know, just like your field test. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can pick them up. See, that's that's the first thing when I'm feeling ribs. Before I unwrap them or no internal temperature or anything, when you pick them up and you can kind of feel them wanting to bend back and they're soft inside the wrap, you know they're probably, that's the first sign they're tender. Then you're supposed to unwrap them and kind of feel on the bones. Probe them with something, see if they're soft like butter, you know. So that's your telltales. But when you got that probe in there, it don't lie. So you pulled them off. Pulled them off, let them rest. I didn't let them rest as long as I was hungry. <laughs> yeah. It was like, huh. at first, I was like, oh, I'm going to let these go two hours in the cooler. And I get done. It was like, I smelt them, felt them. And I was like, eh, let's just go 20. <laughs> and it was like, all right, 15, let's go ahead and knock this out. <laughs> so I just took them out. I didn't do, I didn't do no glaze. Nothing to them. Straight out of the wrap, onto the cutting board. Let them sit there a minute. Y'all took some pictures and then cut them up and tried them. And it was, I mean, to me, the first thing I kind of, you taste the pork. You taste the smoke. The smoke's subtle. It's not overpowering. And then you taste the spices from the sausage. But it's not too spicy either. But it's, but you get, so I get the peppers. I get the salt just kind of balanced out. There's no, there's really no sweet to it. Yeah, there I didn't get the sugar at all. I know it's there, but I didn't get it. And then I get a little bit of that herby saginess, just lightly, and that's enough to make that say, you know, that's different. That's a that's a different flavor than a than a barbecue seasoning. Yeah, and it's really really good. Like I can see those, and I may have said that in the last podcast, but being like a brunch dish, ribs that way would be great with brunch because you, you know it goes with. You could serve that with eggs. You could serve that with anything else, potatoes. It's not like you got to have slaw and beans to go with those yeah. ribs, you know. But to me, they don't, like, you don't taste it and go, mmm, breakfast. Yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. But I just think they would be, I think it would be a really good fit for reason to eat ribs for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Always looking for those. <laughs> yeah, if you need a reason to eat ribs for breakfast, you get it's you sausage. sausage seasoning on them. Sausage seasoning and a little sugar. But it got me to thinking, okay, I did the savory one. That's why, you know, I really love savory ribs. I do too. That's why I like this rib. What if I wanted to create that breakfast rib and I use the sausage seasoning? Like a rib. But you also, you come back, no, you come back with a glaze and you cook your jelly down. So you pick up on that jelly aspect of it and you put the butter in the wrap. And it's just, it would be an over the top, you know, breakfast breakfast style rib. So I may have to do that. I like that. Or pancake syrup on it. I mean, you could you could get you could get out there with it. <laughs> I like the idea of doing a breakfast rib. I think that's interesting. I may do those with baby backs, like because yeah. I hadn't done baby back ribs with sausage season. Let's try that with the with the jelly glaze or I, a maple. See, ooh, that really good maple Vermont maple syrup that that we get yeah, our buddy yeah. sends us with those ribs would probably be excellent. Probably, I could see it. I see. I like some Kerrygold or some really good butter in the wrap. Yeah, get them really rich. They recalled Kerrygold. I saw. What's this? Got some kind of plastic in it or something? Yeah, some, yeah. Not, some kind of chemical or something, right? I had to send it to Mark when I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> He's got stock in that. Yeah, I'm sure he does. <laughs> he better. He's got his own butter fridge. <laughs> yeah, he puts butter in everything. Um, butter in his butter. I liked him a lot. I, uh, to. But There's, it's a good rib. It's different. I like I mean, rib. Yeah, it was like a TX AP style rib. Yeah, with a little more. S- that's the closest thing. Herbiness. I would say it's like way. that Texas rib. You yeah. know how I say they only do salt and pepper in Texas yeah. on ribs. It reminded me a lot of that with some herbs. Yeah, you know, a little Just bit. Just a little more yeah. back end flavor to me. And the crushed red. I mean, it has it picks up on it's. It's a different taste. And I liked him dipping dipping a little in the vinegar sauce. Yeah, yeah. You could definitely serve your sauce on the side. Oh, yeah. That's one. And they would be fine to go back and barbecue glaze those if you wanted to. You could do that. I like them. I don't know what the sausage season. Now, I haven't played with this. Like, sausage season is like your first layer of rub, like a light sausage layer, and then come back with a barbecue rub over it if it would clash too much. I don't know. I've never tried it. So, that was the first time doing it on ribs, but I would do it again. So um, you cook these on the outlaw stick burner. Um, do you 
What do you think about ribs cooked on a stick burner pit? Um, so I'm not saying it's the best, but the texture te- I agree. stick burner pits for texture is hard to beat. Um, taste wise, it's hard to beat the drum, but I don't get as good a bark on the drum as I get on the stick burner. So that's the trade off. But I tell you, some of the best ones I've ever cooked has been on a backwoods water cooker. <laughs> water cooker just does bork good, you know. But I love the texture. I love the uh, the reason why I chose that is I wanted texture. I wanted a I wanted that good hickory smoke without being too strong because a drum will get strong on you quick. Like yeah. you can over smoke something on a drum. It's hard to do it on a stick burner when you're burning it as fuel. You're burning, you know, pretty dry wood anyway, so it's not like over smoking anything. It just it gives it a great great flavor and great texture. I think the texture on it is I don't think you can recreate it on any You can't thing. do it on a pellet grill. You can't yeah. do it on, you know, I can't do it on my egg as good as I can the stick burner or the drum. So I cook great ribs on a on a pellet grill. Yeah. They ain't close to <laughs> they ain't close to a stick burner. So let's say let's say I had six slabs of rib and we cooked them um, Pretty much, we put cook the exact same recipe, six slabs, but we used six different pits to cook these. Yeah. And you did a blind taste test. Do you think you could pick them apart? Be like, that one's the pellet, that one's the stick burner, that one's the drum. I could get the majority of them, I yeah. think. Like, there's some that are so close. Like, between a pellet, a stick burner, and a drum, I think I could definitely pick. Yeah. Um, you know, you go, to the, you go to the old hickory versus the backwoods. Versus another, you know, reverse flow pit or something like that. I don't know if you could get down. Yeah. You could I, probably get close. I, you could, I could pick the one that's on the gas grill. Oh, yeah. You <laughs> can pick those no easy. <laughs> but what's your favorite? What, what pit? Of all the ribs that I've cooked on different pits, which one do you think is the best? Uh, the stick burner and the drum. The stick burner texture is just. It's hard to beat. It's soft. It, it moves is. the right amount of air and renders it really good. I mean, it's, it's hard to beat it. And you can get a little more work running your fire, but yeah, but really, me watching you, you know, I've been watching you cook on that stick burner. It's a lot less work than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, and it runs a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. There's no really fighting it, you know. No, you just as long as you get a bed of coals. That's yeah. the big thing with them. Get your bed of coals and then switch over to your sticks. And just watch it. And as your temp, you know, starts to drop a little bit at, and the fire's burn down, put you another one on. But the, it's that easy. <laughs> but it's the drum, easy. when I first started using the drum, when I would cook competition chicken on the drum, it, it took me a while to get used to it. Because I would, ex- I'd, I'd uh, overcompensate when it was, when it was starting to get high, I'd overcompensate for it and it would drop it too low. Just fluctuating. Yeah. yeah. I learned to make the smaller adjustments instead of the, Big adjustments. And, you, you know, a lot of times we'd run that guru or fan on it and it'd make it. Oh, make yeah. A drum right. that. That's cheating on it. That's <laughs> cheating on the drum, ain't it? Forgot about that. You put that on there and dial it in right where you want. <laughs> I don't think you can do that with a stick burner. I've never heard of anyone running like a draft system on a stick burner. Oh, really? I guess because you're in there adding sticks so much. It doesn't like. It won't work. You know, it doesn't work as well. You need almost like a closed. So, yeah, it, it, that's what it has to be, cl- pretty much a closed system. You could probably get it to, to work some kind of way. I don't know. I've never, never messed with it. but I will say y'all have ruined me with barbecue because I've tried, like, some of the best barbecue in the whole world. <laughs> and so ribs has been a really hard thing for me to tackle, even on a pellet grill. That's what I'm trying to cook on right now because I feel like if I can conquer it on that, then I'll kind of switch over to trying it on the Weber. And... It's just hard, like it's hard for me because I have to go pretty much directly off temps right now. Like I can't. It's, the timing's kind of down to where it's like five, six hours, you know, depending on what I'm doing. But like the last ones I cooked, I came to y'all about it, where I cooked them per- pretty much perfectly to two hundred two. I wrapped it about one sixty ish around that area. I pulled them and then I put them in. So my first mistake y'all said was I put it in a Yeti cooler, and that was a no go. And then the second thing is like I didn't let them rest at all after i unwrapped them so they were just kind of cooking in that uh never vented them yeah yeah Yeah. and it's been tough so you moved them from 250 plus degrees probably on the pit to the yeti which held it right there (laughs) yeah because the yeti is so insulated not that it's bad for holding meat it's way too good for holding (laughs) meat. yeah yeah it doesn't let anything escape i mean you get one of those hot and it's gonna stay hot so 
what I do, like, you know, that rib comes off, I push it up there to 204, immediately vent it when you take it off. You've got to. You can't just go straight to a cooler with it because you've got to let that hot steam out and let it escape. So that's going to cause the temperature of them to drop pretty quick, Let the vent, letting them off vent. And then when you put them in a the cooler, we come back, and we don't always show that. When I say I rest something for an hour or two, I don't show that every 15 minutes you go back by and you open that cooler. You let some of that hot air that's built up out. If you don't, you're still you're still cooking it. So that's the big thing. Once you, I guarantee you the next time, Tyler, when you cook them and you do that, you'll see a big difference. Yeah. I hope so. And then what he was saying also is when it was after the rest was over and he pulled the ribs out, he just went right to – Serving them right to cut. Yeah, because they were falling apart on you, weren't they? They like they were pretty much pulled pork at that point. I mean, yeah, they let go of the bones. They spit them out. Pretty much. Did you have them meat side down in the foil and in the cooler? Um, See, that's a big thing too, because when you cook ribs that done, and you store them meat up on that bone, especially like uh, loin back baby back ribs, they kind of have that arch to them. Well, gravity's pulling that meat away from those bones. That's why we cook them and leave them meat down until we get ready to glaze them at the end but then by that time we've let them tighten up we've let them lock up yeah then we can handle them and flip them over come to think of it like i was pre- i'm pretty sure it was the the wrong way and then the, yeah. i know for sure there was one rack that was laying sideways it's like <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. definitely pulling yeah. it off yeah, yeah, yeah. i just haven't hey you got to go through those trials and tribulations to learn how to do it so mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with it. I'm sure they were still really good. They were just off the bone. Yeah, flavor wise, they were super on point. Some people love fall off the bone ribs, but after you've tried like a, a bite of y'all's Memphis and May, like yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, rack of ribs, like it's pretty hard to eat. Ribs. Where it's on the bone, but as soon as you put your mouth on it, it just comes off and it melts in your mouth. And well, what'd you think about the texture on the deep fried ribs? That's totally not like a smoked rib texture. See, like uh, I liked them immediately, like right yeah. out of too the deep tough fryer for you. Stuff. No, I thought they were really good. We're going to talk about the deep fried ribs. Yeah, we're not going to. I mean, I just wanted to get his take on the te- yeah. texture of them. I did a video on those yesterday. yesterday. It's not even edited, probably not even back there in production yet. <laughs> Rainy day, back deep fried ribs. Yeah. <laughs> you got to improvise in springtime <laughs> yeah. when it's like this. Um, so, in important news, we're in Memphis in May. We got our. We did get letter. accepted. Yeah. We we're one of the fortunate teams. Yeah. We don't have all a lot of details, but we're in. There's a few teams that we know that did not. I know. Get in. I hate it. I hate Jay's not getting to cook it. Yeah, Tennessee Mojo. If I had any pull, I'd be. I'd try, I'd <laughs> try to work some magic, but I was, I was sweating us getting in. Yeah. The only thing that I thought we had going for us was, as soon as that application we went live, I said, "Shell, go ahead and pay, get our spot lined up, and we put first our application day. I mean, in like no hours yeah. within an hour of them getting it out. Yeah." And if you waited, knew. if you hesitated, I mean, you're going to have that many people in front of you. I saw someone in the community say we need to get Jay on the podcast this week and talk about us. <laughs> we might let him Simmer down. Give, give a week. I mean, I'm, I would be upset, you know. Yeah, he won it two years ago. Two, yeah. yeah. Two times ago, whatever that was. Yeah, two times ago. That sucks. Yeah, and, and they He can come hang out with lot. us. Yeah, I don't know if he would. Really? I mean, would you want to go to Memphis MA if they blackballed you? Well, it wasn't blackballed. <laughs> they didn't accept you. I don't. I'd hate to have to make that decision because there's no there's no winner there. There was several other teams that oh, yeah. have been cooking for a long time and didn't get in. I've seen some of the names of some teams that didn't make it. I was shocked. But the reason it's cut down is because it is in Tom Lee Park this year. It right? is. They've guaranteed that. Like they have a signed contract that's going to be in Tom Lee Park. That's cool. And you know, uh, Jay didn't just win ribs to Memphis as a May ago. He won like he's won the chicken category, he's won seafood category. I think he's won a beef category. Like he's they've walked the stage yeah. a lot yeah. in the past couple of years. But stinks. Is I mean, you know, what are you gonna do? So are you ready for Shell's learning time? I'm always <laughs> ready for Shell's learning time. Um, so I saw TikTok, which is pretty much where I get all my news and my information. Um, have you seen this about flouring your bacon? I I do this. I did see that. You do it? I do this. Does it work? Yes. It's supposed to make it like extra crispy. Yes. And it loses like, it, you know how sometimes bacon shrinks a lot? Yes. It doesn't shrink at all. Like at all. It's so in that video you're talking about, come across my feed, all they did was like sprinkle flour over it on a sheet yeah. pan. 
Do you dredge it or do you just do that? Light, light sprinkle. Personally, I do like a light sprinkle and I just kind of pat it over the top yeah. of it and then put it in. And That's what you do. Super good. Best baking. I got. We got to try that. I know. So I, I did some research on it. Like what she. Some people suggested an overnight chill, like flour and then overnight chill it. But I don't have time for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. gonna have time for that. But the reason it, they say that because of the flour absorbs the excess grease, it helps the strips hold their shape so they don't curl up. And they but say does it taste grease. like floury or, yeah. or battered? It can. If you go too heavy with the flour, it'll absolutely taste like flour. Yeah. So how much flour do you say you put on like, do, are, are we That's, talking uh, like on the stove frying or oven cooking? This is oven cooking. Okay. I would say... On all of it together, probably no more than like two tablespoons. Like, okay, it's just do you do really both like, sides or just the top side? Uh, just the top side. Oh, okay, yeah, because the one I uh, read said lay it across the pan, evenly coat it, mm-hmm. give it a few minutes, flip it, do the other side too. But you just do one yeah. side. I would be worried about just because I have made a batch or two that have tasted like flour. I would be worried about that happening if you're doing the overnight kind of soaking method in the flour. I'm sure that probably helps too, but. Uh know about that overnight we're gonna try it either way hey i'll eat some bacon <laughs> <laughs> have y'all had deep fried bacon like i know you have it mr peas yeah I have, have you had that tyler mm-hmm. well, so see, they take they take that what y'all are talking about to a whole nother level they bread it just like you're talking about dredge it in flour and then put it in a deep fat fryer like where you cook the wings and fries and all that and fry it and it gets crispy like battered Battered bacon. Yeah, it's almost it how they much serve it's it. too thick of a batter. I know? mean, it's a it's a batter. Yeah. I mean it's delicious. Yeah, oh, I'm sure it's got some kind of egg wash or something to make yeah. it because it's a thicker batter. And they serve it with like warm syrup to dip your bacon. I mean, it's gotta be horrible for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's delicious. Well, see what I was reading about this flour in your bacon gives you the texture of deep fried bacon. Really? Yeah. We're trying that this weekend. <laughs> That's it. We're gonna to. try it. It's I saw this other TikTok. It was like a way to store your bacon because, you know, I guess some people don't cook the whole pack. <laughs> like, you know, open bacon, <laughs> I cook the whole pack. But if you don't cook the whole pack, they laid out bacon on a bacon sheet with, like, wax paper and strips. And then they took their scissors and cut down each strip and then rolled it up into a little rosette and put that in a Ziploc bag and freeze it. So that way if you want to cook two or three pieces, you go to your Ziploc bag, Take you out a few. You can unroll it. Thaws fast, and then you got individual pieces of bacon. You don't have just oh, because there's nothing worse than open up a pack of bacon, and try to put it back in the fridge, and it gets yeah. all slimy, and the package is greasy. And I mean, I get that. I, I'm just with you though. That's cook the too much pack. work. Cook the gonna, whole pack. Way too much work. I cook the whole pack. Yeah, I'll just eat bacon on the next day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of don't store it. Yeah, because yeah, man. Because <clears throat> bacon's just as good the next day. Yeah. I, mean, I put it on salads, put it on all kinds of stuff, yeah. potatoes. That's just a little too much work for me. It's just like the whole, uh, ha- so have you seen the wooden spoon thing? How to clean your wooden spoons? You drop them in um, a, a, a pot of boiling water, and supposedly all this gunk will come out of your wooden spoons, and that's how you're supposed to clean them. Really? Yeah, you're not supposed to dishwash wooden spoons, by the way. I knew that, but yeah. I think it's got more with the drying and the heat than it does... I could see that uh, and it cracking it. I just well, wash you, them in the sink, like scrub them off, and there they go. I throw them in the dishwasher. <laughs> you just buy new ones when they crack. <laughs> yeah, just buy new ones. So it's a wooden spoon. It ain't like it's <laughs> some heirloom. Yeah. You get a pack of them for four bucks. It's not like it's a cast iron skillet. I completely yeah. understand why you take care of a cast iron skillet and you can keep them for years and years and years, but it's a wooden spoon. <laughs> yeah. And you're not supposed to use soap. On your wooden spoons when you wash them either. <laughs> Chemical soaps can break down the materials of the spoon. What do you use? You're supposed to. Just um, hot water? Yeah. Just use a very mild soap occasionally with warm water. My wife had this like pampered chef bamboo uh, salad tosser thing. And it came with like two, uh, you know, salad servers. Yeah. And I put them both in the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it's hard on bamboo. Because I yeah. had some bamboo stirs. Somebody put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, somebody today. dishwashed them for me. They split automatically. <laughs> <laughs> then you know what? Buy you some new ones. <laughs> or, I guess the wooden spoons that I buy, which I like using wooden spoons. It's great for cooking and stirring. Oh, yeah, I use them all the time. Yeah. But the ones I use, I mean, I pay 
less than 10 bucks for a pack yeah, of them. It's a pack assortment. Yeah. It's got the one with the hole in it. I don't know. It's got the three teeth one. It's got the flat one. <laughs> it's got the one that's just a hole. I don't know what that, I guess it's for gauging spaghetti or something. I don't know what it's for. I don't know. Pasta stir? I'll look into that. Let's go. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what it's you're talking hole. about. <laughs> it's just a hole. Just a hole. <laughs> so this thing's good for nothing. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I got some community questions for you. Fire them at me. I need you to be more excited. About I'm excited. This. I love the community questions. <laughs> I do. I love the community questions. So, um, Nathan had this a question that I thought was really good. Does anyone have a go to Asian rub seasoning? We do a lot of stir fry, and I was wondering if you found something like that that's more store- than just ginger and garlic. Never store bought. I mean, I always have this issue. Yeah. There's one little Asian rub that we have up in the pantry, but it's not that great. And it's like some generic weird. I don't even know where we found it. Yeah, I think yeah, I don't know where we bought that. I actually have something I'm working on, but it's more of a Thai seasoning. Yeah. Cause I it's like, not the Asian like you yeah. would use for a stir fry. No, but I mean, I think most of the time those flavors, I mean, it's, you're using salt and you're using garlic and you're using peppers. You're using, you know, some fresh ginger, herbs like, yeah. and ginger. I mean, that's that's the flavors I go for. I don't really know of like an all-purpose Me Asian either. seasoning, but Me either. I, I'd a lot love of accent. <laughs> He's a lot of accent usually. MSG. Uh, I will say we got to try a bunch of the Spiceology stuff because we were ordering stuff yeah. from the shop. I really liked the Korean barbecue one that we got to try. That really? one was super good. Would you call it like a – would you have used it in a stir fry? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it would have tasted pretty good. I always, when I do Asian foods, I'm always looking for, you know, yeah, an all-in-one type of rub or seasoning. Yeah. We don't have anything good. No, that's something to think about. Maybe like an Asian all-purpose seasoning that's great on stir-fry meats, whatever you're using it for, sauces. So um, Terrell had a question. He wanted to know, what type of pork ribs are served on Chili's menu? He said they look. They're baby bags. <laughs> <laughs> right? I he said they look bag, baby, uh, baby long bag. and thin. They're baby bags. Did y'all see the comment section of that question? No, uh, but I bet it's a good one. Like, wait, have you not heard the commercial? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I said Maybe he's asking, like, question. yeah. <laughs> Certain, those, I mean, now. Where are they getting them? How are they yeah, processing them? I don't, I don't them? know where they're yeah. getting from, but. Yeah, they're smaller. Like I don't think they're super meaty baby backs. They're probably on the two and a half and down instead of the two seven fives or three and a halves. What does that mean? Weight per pound. Oh, okay, okay. Because they're smaller bones, you know, so you get different sizes of them. So you're co- it's coming off a smaller hog. I would imagine so. Yeah, they probably grade them as, as some kind of way. Or maybe they're just not as healthy as hogs. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting the sickly ones that never put on weight. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, Chili's didn't spend a whole lot of money on wherever they're getting their ribs. Let's. What is? What do you think a thing of uh, Chili's baby back, Chili's baby back ribs goes for these days? Oh, I bet you it's twenty two ninety five or more. I think like it is seventeen ninety five. Is my guess. Like what the full like full rack dinner? Do they, do they have a full rack dinner at Chili's? Do you know how long it's been since I've been to a Chili's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a full um, full order. Four ribs. That? Probably making you put it twenty two ninety five. It might be twenty five dollars. Yeah, do you have to give them your information for the well, I gotta give them my location. I feel like if it's super cheap, then we're gonna know our answer to this question if it's the yeah. sickly one or the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or if it's like Smithfield Prime ribs or something. Oh. Uh, <laughs> won't let me order it. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> We'll report Seven, a half order is seventeen nineteen. Yeah, so I was. What's oh, a full order? It wouldn't let me add a full order. They don't have full. Well, we'll assume it's thirty six dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me see if they'll let me do the mix, mix and match. Mix and match. I can do side. a half of one and half of another for twenty two twenty nine. So that gives you a, a little cheaper. So you were pretty much right on the money then. Yeah, <laughs> a full order of ribs is twenty two twenty nine. Yeah, I was I was what I say twenty two ninety five. Yep, it's close. Their classic sirloin is fourteen ninety nine. 
Just so you know. The best thing they have is that Monterey chicken. I wonder if they still have that. <laughs> it's <laughs> that probably been good. 25 years since I've had it, but it's good. That's about the only thing. I always liked it, Chili's. Did y'all ever try the prime rib burrito they used to have? Uh-uh. Oh, my gosh. They took it off the menu probably like five years ago or so, but it was my fav- one of my favorite things to eat. Uh, so. Do we even have a Chili's around here? Is there one in South Haven still? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Didn't you used to hang out at the bar up there? I mean, that's been 30 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Or 25, any, anyway. That's when it was new. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You saw the day when the Chili's moved to Enid. I did, yeah. All my buddies, that's all, when the new places opened up, that's where all your friends went to work. You know, everybody had to get the mm-hmm. new job. Paid a little more than Applebee's or <laughs> O'Charlie's. That's how they get you. Well, Mount, that's about all I have today. What do you have coming up this next week? We got um, spring break. It's spring break. We're going to go catch a ball game if we don't get rained out Sunday. Go down to Oxford. Um, we will not have a podcast next week. Yeah, because of spring break. Yep. And, um. I'm probably, I imagine I'll do some cooking. I got to go home and cook some bacon now, some flour. <laughs> yeah, we're going to cook some bacon this uh, weekend. We'll report back. Yeah, I'm cooking that. some crawfish up here at the shop one day. Tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah. I'm going to cook a sack just to get a little content. I don't think we did a crawfish video on TikTok yet, did we? I don't know no. if we did or not. Nope. Not like a full fledged. Yeah. Like, that's how you do it. I don't know if it, that's how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got some pretty good crawfish. Yeah, I can cook them. <laughs> I can cook them. You also did, you fried some ribs yesterday, did some. I had to do, I know everybody's seen the butterfly chicken legs, or I'm assuming everybody has, but I I saw them do them in the air fryer, and I wanted to try it to see if it was any good. They're really good. They were crispy. They yeah. almost were like fried chicken. I mean, I've been doing thighs in there, and they were as good as the thighs I've been doing. Yeah. You could do them any kind of way. I just threw some Cajun seasoning. They're really good. They're real good. Just let them cool down first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you burn yourself. Yep. I did. I may infuse some more vodka. In a dishwasher? In a dishwasher. No, I don't have, I mean, spring break, we're going to take it easy. I'm planning on turkey hunting, so. Any turkey recipes? Yeah. If I shoot one. <laughs> what do you do with a wild turkey? Mm, do you just Breast it, it out and cut it up and usually make. Fried turkey strips or something like that with it. That's how I like to do it. What is it? Buttermilk? Yeah. Just a dredge. Buttermilk it a little bit. Maybe add an egg to it. Dredge it in seasoned flour. Deep fry it. That's it. Does it taste like super different from like um, regular turkey? Yes and no. I mean, you can still know. You know it's turkey, but it's definitely a little different texture. Cause is it a darker meat? No, the breast isn't. It's still, you know, I mean, it is dark. Yeah, it is darker than what you think Thanksgiving turkey would be. Yeah. But um, it's a little different. I don't know. It's wild. You know, it's wild turkey. So it's all muscle. And, you know, the texture, I mean, the buttermilk helps soften it up. But it's like the legs on them. I've never had cooked a wild turkey leg that was worth eating. The breast is about the only thing. You're, you look skeptical. <laughs> I trust you. You trust me? That's if I kill one. I mean, I just, yeah, you gotta cry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more skeptical about you killing one than I am about yeah. being yeah, able I'm to cook, cook it. it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I got that. I can cook it. Can I actually Chase sneak up down? on one? Chase one down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get pretty lucky, <laughs> but it's not gonna be for lack of trying. <laughs> well, Tyler, what else is going on, man? We're can. Oh, we got a um, contest. We wrapped Did up we? a contest. Yeah, so we wrapped up one of our contests for February. Um, we announced who won? Don't yeah, worry. so there were 10 winners. All the winners are uh, at the very top of the Let's Get to Cooking community page. If you go there, uh, have contact all the winners. Everybody's got their uh, little jerk package. But we are starting one really, really soon uh, that will come out this Friday. So when this podcast goes live, it should already be live. So make sure you guys head over to Facebook.com and go to the Let's Get to Cooking community uh, we're holding a little contest. We want to see everybody's favorite uh, fish recipes and favorite fish dishes. And so basically you post a comment of a picture of your favorite fish you've ever cooked, and then other people are going to go vote on your picture. And the top three people uh, that win are going to get prizes. And we're kind of teaming up with uh, our buddy Pond Town Design. Yeah, Pond Town Design. The, they have these. Oh, yeah. That's who did our coasters. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he does like that. He does could, uh, wood cutting boards and stuff. And there will actually be a pinned comment at the top. If you guys are interested in looking at any of his stuff, uh, you guys can head over to that link. And I think that's he's cool. created a little discount code for everybody. So, Oh, that's really that's cool. cool. Yep. And then you'll win either um, 
you'll win some Pond Town design gifts and then uh, a gift card. Yep. From How to Barbecue. Right, so. gift card to get ready to use it. online or in the shop. Yep. Use online or in the <clears> shop. <throat> well, great. Michelle, tell everybody where they can find us. If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course YouTube. If you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram. All right. Well, we'll. Won't be back next week. It'll be the week after because of spring break, but we appreciate y'all hanging out with us. 